الرحیم نحمد رو و نسلی علی رسول کریم و علی عبده المسیح ما ٹاپک آف مائی پرسنٹیشن لائک میدی صاحب ہیز مینشن دس ہیز کم آؤٹ آف آور ڈسکشنس بیسڈ آن لرننگ دی قرآن اینڈ دین ٹرائنگ ٹو کنیکٹ اٹ ٹو کرنٹ سائنٹیفک ریسرچ So the first words of Surah Fatiha is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So the the two two attributes of Allah, Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim, comes from the root word Re, Ha, and Me. And these are the meanings that could be associated with this root word. It could mean mercy or compassion. It could mean sustenance or means of subsistence. So what uh, we, what I would like to focus on is relating to the concept of creation, because this root word can also mean womb, which is a source of life, and this also means mercy that is repeatedly shown. So if you look at the attributes Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, in Arabic if you take a root word and add other words to it, it denotes an intensiveness that it is more significant. So the, uh, the more significant meanings that can come out of this is that His mercy, Allah's mercy comprehends the entire universe and then He shows mercy to all creation without us deserving anything and he also creates without having need, needing anything to create so this relation between the concept of ar-rahman and creation it not doesn't just appear in surah fatiha in verse uh, 20 in chapter 20 verse 6 allah ta'ala says that he is the gracious God who has settled himself on the throne. So the word Ar-Rahman and the word Arsh, the throne, appears together in this verse. And the root of Arsh could also mean that is something that is built or constructed, that Allah is the support of a thing, and that he has complete power and sovereignty over that. So after the verse Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, then comes Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So the meaning of Rabb could also, from the root word, you have the meaning that he nourished or fostered that creation, for instance, he collected or processed it, or that he brought it into a state of completion in degrees. So this talks about the concept of evolution, for example, that Allah is someone who has brought a thing into completion over many stages. And He has brought the, the universe, so He is the Rabb of Alameen, so He has brought the universe into completion over many stages. And then, interestingly, Allah Ta'ala repeats the word Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Then he says again, he is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. So this words, this, these two attributes are repeated in the first three verses. So this one implication could be that he will bring about the universe into creation through various stages. And then Allah could also repeat such a cycle again. I would like to request few more minutes to go through, if that's fine. I'll quickly go to the science part. And then he, in the following verse, Allah says, He is Maliki Yawmiddin. So, Malik, as we know, is master. And Yaw could mean present time, it could mean period, it could mean a cycle. So, the concept of repeating the cycle of creation could also be viewed from this verse. And Allah is the master of all time scales. I noticed that uh, 
the smallest time scale that human beings have been able to measure is 10 to the minus 18 second and then you have the largest time scale which is of the order of the creation of the universe or since the time since the creation of the universe it's about 10 to the 17 seconds so i'll quickly go into the scientific part of it so this is this the support for this interpretation can be found from other verses of the holy quran as well like in uh, chapter 21 verse 105 where allah says as we began the first creation so shall we repeat it a promise binding upon us and this has been touched upon, upon in um, revelation rationality knowledge and truth by hazrat khalif al masih the fourth there is this is an illustration of uh, a black hole and then a universe emerging from this black hole and this cycle could repeat so when you look at the scientific, uh, what current research says about this, that um, there, are, there are models that predict that the universe, after having been come into being, will not expand forever, as the scientists see, that it will somehow stop expanding and then it will go back to some other initial state. So this is referred to as the Big Crunch Universe. Here is a picture of this scenario where you have a big bang and then universe starts expanding and then you have some sort of maximum expansion state and then the universe will start contracting back into a singularity. So this scenario of a big crunch universe is not widely accepted. They say that uh, the current models the most prevalent current scientific model states that the universe will continue to expand forever. However, there are recent theories that suggest that that's not the case, that you could have indeed a scenario where the universe will stop expanding and then it will turn around towards a collapsed state. So this is an instance where as scientists we know for sure Allah Ta'ala has made this promise in the Holy Quran that everything that exists, he will bring it, he will cause it to perish. So this is the, again a picture of this uh, big crunch theory, where you have a universe that exists before, and then it collapses, and then Allah Ta'ala brings about a new universe. 